Um, welcome. So I'm going to talk about uh, scalable layer two overlay networks with routed VXLAN and multipurpose BGP over eVPN. So that's a whole mouthful. <laughs> Actually, it should have been uh, called uh, help. Uh, oh, oops. <laughs> help. Uh, network operations took over hypervisor networking. Uh, basically, <laughs> what I'm going to tell you is the work my networking colleagues have done to our hypervisors. So we were running also open free switch, tagged freelance, and all that kind of stuff until they decided they, uh, well, they built something cool and they wanted to push it down even further south to our hypervisors. So. Um, and I actually, I thought of this uh, cool idea, so I cooperated with them. Uh, and then again, it can't be your problem if it's not your network. So I can just blame them if something works, doesn't work. Um, so who am I? I'm Stefan, uh, Stefan Koman. Uh, I work for BIT. It's an internet service provider in the Netherlands. Uh, well, we do data center stuff and uh, cloud, of course, and all kinds of things. Um, and well, um, this talk is about how you can stretch uh, layer two um, broadcast domains uh, between data centers. So um, I'm gonna talk a lot. And well, just to make sure you got some of my point, um, the benefits of PGP EVPN can be to um, overcome the v 4K uh, VLAN limit Customers can use their own uh, VLAN or VXLAN schema, uh, especially when they, if they bring uh, iron to your data center and they want to use, um, um, use hardware and virtual machines of your cloud, you can actually bridge them together and use their own VLAN schema. You can use it to, uh, well, st stretch, uh, not completely uh, written correctly, uh, layer two segment, uh, segments across the data centers. Um, you can reduce flooding traffic uh, caused by um, our suppression. Uh, you have Mac mobility. Um, if you have migrated virtual machines between um, between different data centers with a lot of switches involved, uh, then you might uh, hit um, um, the issue that the, 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 the tables of the switches aren't updated uh, in time. And you might, uh, uh, so switches might not know that the VM actually migrated. And you can use egress load balancing also called equal cost multipathing for BGP. So this is how old uh, network uh, looked like, um, old style, access layer below, uh, aggregation uh, switches, layer three routers. Um, well, we had some issues with it. Bandwidth limitations, spanning tree, <coughs> really ugly, uh, especially when your um, um, uh, routers have more bandwidth than your um, internal network and you get uh, really nice uh, flapping uh, ports and that kind of stuff. Um, slow conversions, IPv6 routing in CPU, that doesn't uh, work uh, very well, and unsupported gear. Um, so we wanted to use uh, new standards and open pro um, protocols for, uh, for the new um, uh, network. Uh, must be able to work in the IPv6 only setup. No more spanning tree, all active <coughs> links and only routed. Uh, bandwidth on demand. And all custom, current customer setups uh, must be supported. Um, well, we still uh, work with our billing software. So we envisioned what if every switch could track all attached hosts and IP addresses, and a switch creates a host route, slash 32 or slash 128, uh, for every directly attached IP um, connected to a host. Um, well, host routed are redistributed in the routing protocol, allowing every other switch in the network to route towards any other host. Uh, well, and traffic to unknown destinations is dropped instead of forwarded out of all ports. Would that be possible? Turns out you can. If you use BGP as the control plane um, with the extension of um, eVPN, and you can actually pick different data planes. There are even more than the, these described. And we uh, chose uh, VXLAN. It's commonly, uh, commonly used, mostly used in um, environments like we, uh, we have. So a uh, short summary about VXLAN. You've got uh, an inner Ethernet frame and it gets some extra 50 bytes overhead from VXLAN. A uh, header with a, a VXLAN ID, it's like a VLAN ID with a VXLAN ID. Um, some some uh, outer and uh, desktop piece and a source port 
so it knows where to forward uh, a VXLAN packet to. Um, so VXLAN has its own RFC, uh, 24 bits VNI field, so you can have like 16 million virtual networks, which should be enough for most networks. Um, recommended uh, layer 2 MTU is uh, more than 1600 bytes if you plan to use VLAN tags and IPv6. Um, well, it uses a UDP with a, with a hash over the payload of the inner Ethernet header, and um, if you use it on the Linux, they used to have a default port, which is not uh, the standard, um, so you have to actually specify. So, eVPN in summary, um, has its own RFC. Um, it's, it's a multi-tenant control plane for layer two, layer three VPNs. It uses a new BGP family. Um, so you have like IPv4 routing, IPv6 routing, and this is a new uh, BGP family. Um, well, can work with many uh, data plane encapsulations. Um, and actually it carries the IP and MAC uh, reachability information. Um, and so it knows where uh, a specific MAC address, IP address uh, lives in your network. Uh, it uses a couple of different types of, of our route types. Uh, there are 12 specified uh, eVPN route types. Only three are used most of the times. It's uh, type 2, 3, and 5. Uh, two are for MAC IP. Um, three are for VTAPs. Uh, so, um, and type 4 is for routed. So, we are going to talk about um, underlay networks and overlay networks. Um, and you can see, well, you want to connect um, layer two virtual machines spread across data centers. In between, uh, in, in the cloud, there is a thing called the underlay IP network. And its sole purpose is to just forward VXLAN packets. And it, do, it does that by BGP, and it's all routed. On top of that, you use VXLAN to encapsulate all the traffic. And um, um, you can run another BGP overlay network on top of that to create the overlay network. So the underlay network, single purpose is to ensure reachability of the loopback interfaces. So all the virtual terminal endpoints on the, on the participating nodes um, are configured on the loopback. Um, and that's the sole purpose of this whole underlay network. So it's pretty simple. Um, yeah, there we go. So this is how our new network looks like. We've got the internet core routers, it's still the same. We've got a leaf spine uh, network, or a closed setup, how they call it. Two spines, all connected to uh, a leaf. Um, so it's a redundant setup. Um, well, we use arrested switches with plenty of bandwidth. Every, um, on the top of it is uh, 14 gigabit per, per leaf, and every leaf is connected to two spines, so it's 80 gigabit per second per leaf. Um, well, underlay, underlay, um, underlay, underlay design. We only need one IP address family. We happen to use IPv4 because the, 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 the Trident 2.8 uh, switch chipset we use is not, uh, uh, doesn't support IPv6. So we had to use IPv4, unfortunately. Uh, newer chipsets will able uh, to use IPv6. Um, you've got point-to-point -point links, such pretty ones. Uh, we use one AI, uh, autonomous system, one AS for all spines, and one unique um, AS per switch pair. Um, we use, no, like I said, BGP to make the, the virtual terminal endpoints available. We tweak the timers, so you don't need um, BFD. It's a way to, to check for the, for the, for the uh, sessions to be alive on BGP. You can use it, you don't need to, if you tweak it. Uh, well, it's very simple, according to my networking colleagues. It isn't, I will show you. Um, well, NTU is more than 9,000, um, so you can actually stack this. So you can do VXLAN on VXLAN on VXLAN, as long as you've got enough NTU um, uh, space left, you can uh, do inception uh, all the way down. Um, there are only 300 routes in the BGP, um, you know, which makes it really speedy. Um, BGP is made to, to be, you know, the internet is built out of BGP and you can have store like millions of routes without any problem. So uh, for BGP to convert 300, 300 routes is like sub-second, it's really so fast, you don't notice. You can even play, uh, well, yeah, we won't notice it, really. Um, so the overlay design, dual stack, IPv4 and IPv6, 
We only use one overlay network, uh, or one AS for the overlay network for all leaves and spines. Um, and the spines in this case, for those who know BGP, they are used uh, route reflectors. So uh, they, they redistribute all the, all the, the routes they learn to the leaves and the nodes. Uh, so also we did some tweaking here. Um, yeah, and the cool thing is, as long as the, 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 the virtual terminal endpoints are reachable from the underlay network, uh, the overlay network doesn't even know something's happening, um, which is pretty cool. So you can have links, uh, links down, and the overlay network won't, uh, won't suffer from that. Uh, we've got our own uh, virtual routing, um, uh, virtual routing forwarding um, schema, but it's not really interesting. You can choose whatever schema you want. Um, so the overlay design, we use MCLAC as the first hop redundancy, so all our hypervisors are connected uh, to an uh, uh, MCLAC pair. It's like LSAP, but then spread across um, uh, two chassis. Um, so that's the, the redundancy. You can do it in another way, but that's, well, for another, for another story. Um, you can have all active gateways on, um, on your nodes. You make sure you don't have access to, um, well, it's called the default uh, VRF in Linux. So um, you, you cannot touch the, the tunnels. Um, we use the loopback for, for ICMP replies, and we can filter advertised routes learned from the spines if we need to. So the host on top of this um, underlay network, so in the, in the, um, in the overlay, uh, perceive it as a full mesh. They think they have direct connections to each other. So this is, uh, like I said, uh, this is our current uh, proof uh, concept. Uh, the first two layers are already production. It's the spines and the leaves. But um, to make the hypervisors part of this, uh, of this new way of networking is, uh, is uh, the, the proof of concept we are uh, presenting right now. So how would you do that, eVPN and VXN on a hypervisor? Well, recommendations, use 4.5 and over. Um, I would say 4.14 or over because there's some nice features you want to use. We use 4.18. Uh, we use FRR routing 6.0. Then you don't need to build it yourself. And uh, the guys from Cumulus, um, they, um, well, they fixed if, if down, um, and they made if down too. If you don't want to uh, spend uh, half of your life uh, debugging that plan, you can actually use if down too, and it works out of the box. So underlay for the hypervisors. Um, Point-to-point -point uplinks, uh, one loopback address in the default for URF. Uh, we've got an out-of-band management network in a separate network namespace. Uh, namespaces are uh, cool uh, Linux uh, networking way of isolating uh, networks. We use that trick as well here. Uh, well, BGP sessions and all the uplinks of, on to the leaf switches, so it's redundant as well. Um, well make the loopback available and uh, make sure the MTU is bigger than 1600. So the overlay data plane, so how would you go about it? You make a virtual routing interface. Um, you create at least two bridges. I have, to, well, I have to explain a little bit more here. You can have like pure layer two overlay network, but you can even route between uh, VXLAN um, instances, uh, which is a layer, and you've got a special VNI for that called an L3 uh, no, VNI. Um, but it's actually out of scope because OpenEvola, uh, as, as far as OpenEvola is concerned, only uh, touches, uh, uh, well, it, it doesn't go up um, above layer two. So layer three is for, uh, uh, for ourselves um, to, to fix. Um, you create a VTAP uh, for each bridge with an IP address of the loopback, attach the VTAP to the bridge, the VNet to the uh, VNet to the bridge. You configure uh, MAC and IP addresses, do some R traffic filtering, and uh, enable forwarding CCTL tuning. So this is how you would do it. Um, create a virtual routing interface, uh, set it up, connect, create a bridge um, connected to the master VRF uh, for the layer two and layer three. Here you will actually see how we will. Um, well, this is what actually OpenEvola is going to do with the new uh, eVPN um, drivers. Um, so it's going to use the loopback IP, the 2.13.1.3.6 uh, IP over there. Um, 
as the virtual terminal endpoint. Uh, so that's where the, the traffic goes. Um, so the same for the for the layer three VNI. Well, it's uh, just a bunch of, of commands you can just run. Set up the VTAP, uh, make sure the MTU is in a, okay. Attach the bridges. Uh, well, set it all up. Um, but I'll skip over of course I have a little demo I want to show you. And probably I'm already way out of time. Yep. Um, so make sure uh, we drop ARP. Um, there's no need to learn um, because we learned by the EVP and control plane. <coughs> Do some tuning. Um, well, open nebula support, like I said, um, you can do this all by hand. Uh, but well, there's support for this in Open Nebula um, in 5.6.3 or in Master at least. Uh, there's some little things that have to be tweaked, but um, I'm told Jan is going to pick it up and he's going to fix these little things for us. And then we're actually going to use the Open Nebula driver to do uh, to do all this, so you can just forget it. Um, you just have to change uh, VXLAN mode to EVPN if you used to use uh, multicast for this. Uh, you can uh, define which um, uh, VTAP uh, point you want. In this, uh, this case, you want to use the local IP, and in most setups there, you want to do that. And you can specify some uh, extra parameters, and you can add some more if you want to, or if you need to. Um, so we will proxy ARP, and we do no, no learning uh, on the interface. Okay, so uh, how does the config look like? Like I said, it's not easy. Um, it's the FRR routing uh, configuration. Uh, you need to understand BGP. So if you don't know BGP, if you don't want to learn BGP, just forget about this whole presentation, really. Um, <laughs> because you need people that understand BGP. Uh, I'm well, fortunate enough to work for a company that, that uh, has people uh, on board that uh, well, only do BGP. Um, big ISPs, they all have uh, networking uh, guys that, uh, that, that love BGP. And they will, you will need them to actually configure the network to make sure that this is going to work out. Uh, if you want to set this up by yourself as a, as a sole sysadmin, well, you are in for a, for a treat. Uh, you will learn a lot, but it's going to take some time. Um, I'm still, well, I want to learn BGP because BGP, I understand a little bit of it, but really, um, it has a lot of nuances and details that I still don't know. But fortunately, I can ask my colleagues uh, about all that kind of stuff. So, um, okay, keep calm. We got a demo. Fingers crossed, because, well, demos. Uh, well, we're first gonna, first <laughs> gotta do some demo. Um, let's see. Um, so yeah, here we go. I've got two, I actually have thought I had way more time than this. So that's why I skipped over the slide so fast. Um, yeah, it's still live, so. Uh, two virtual machines running on two hypervisors. Um, each setup the way I described. Um, nothing special really, just bionic uh, virtual machines, I believe. Um, just open it in the VNC console. So I'm gonna do an MTR. Oh, okay. I don't know what I do, but my karma is influencing the screen. Um, yeah, there we go. So you can actually see we, um, when we do a, a trace route, you can see we go through the loopback of the hypervisor, number one in this case. We go to a leaf switch, then we go to the core router, and then we end up at the load balancer. So that's all nice. Um, let's move some stuff around. So um, first I'm gonna show you some other stuff. Let me see if this is gonna give some output in the meantime. Gonna go. Yeah, here you. This is actually uh, a trace route for my um, test of all my work, so you can actually see. Um, so here we um, here we see. I'm gonna refresh this. Um, well, here you can see all the remote virtual terminal endpoints that this um, router knows about, where it can send. Um, traffic uh, if it needs to. So all those virtual terminal endpoints are participating in this, uh, in this network. Um, so if it doesn't know the MAC address or IP address for, um, for a virtual machine, it might actually fraud traffic 
uh, which it doesn't know, like broadcast, un uh, unknown unicast and multicast traffic to those virtual terminal endpoints. Um, and let me see. Here you can see how this router knows how to, um, to reach the, the virtual machine I'm uh, about to migrate. So let me see if I can highlight it. The, the next hop for, um, for this virtual machine is this IP address over here. So it knows how to reach it. Now let's move this uh, thing around. Um, no, that's the wrong terminal. Um, there we go. No, that went fast. Maybe too fast. It's a demo. Let's see if that actually worked out. Um, oh, it's migrating. Yeah, sure. It's, 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 this is a proof of concept thing uh, running on one gigabit, so it's a bit slow. Oh, it's running. It's running on the other hypervisor. Um, so let's see. Oh, you see a VNC disconnect, so that makes that makes sense. Um, you're gonna connect. If you see here, and you can actually see MTR keeps the old hop in its uh, in its list, and you can see uh, we have a new um, loopback IP, which is the hypervisor number two. Um, and let me see if we rerun this command. We should now have a little bit of different output. We should see that the next hop, <coughs> where this machine is reachable, is on the other hypervisor. So um, there are more points in the network where you can actually uh, check where your virtual machine is running. But of course, your network knows where your virtual machine is running. Um, and probably I have some, some output over here. Um, well, this isn't really interesting, just being an artificial machine. Um, well, so, but your network knows um, where your virtual machines live, and that's the cool thing. Um, and the, so the, the BGP control plane actually stores um, the, the, the MAC and the MAC IP combinations in its routing tables. And so um, the, if a virtual machine wants to communicate to another virtual machine uh, and it knows uh, the MAC address for it, then it will just reply um, locally. It doesn't uh, broadcast this uh, uh, to other hosts. It will just reply locally that it knows um, where this VM lives. And if the VM wants to send traffic, it actually knows to which virtual terminal endpoint it has to send this traffic and uh, send the traffic over. And the endpoints are responsible for encapsulating in VX land and de decapsulating at the endpoint. Um, so yeah, there are um, that, that, that's, that's for the demo, I think. There's way more things to show you, but um, I will run out of time. Um, so, yeah, are there any questions uh, for what, oh, what you have seen right, uh, until now? Oh, that's the end of it. There we go. Some more configs. Um, yeah, questions. There. So I have two questions. Did you do any uh, benchmarking to see if there's a significant impact in performance with all the uh, encapsulation that's happening? Um, well, the encapsulation in, in, the, in the network, um, it's all done in hardware, so it doesn't have. It's all done by, uh, offloaded by ASICs. But, um, and our NICs have VXN offloading as well. So I don't expect it, but this is just a proof of concept. We're also going to do a more production uh, setup, and we're actually going to uh, do iperf and that kind of stuff. I can still saturate the one gigabit links, but well, uh, uh, that doesn't really matter. You really want to know if you can sustain like 40 gigabit or so. So you can answer the question I wanted to ask. Do you have any uh, ideas how you're going to migrate existing infrastructure over to it? But this is purely proof of concept today, and you don't have it in production yet. Yeah, we don't have it in production yet. I have thought about it. Just um, and I'm pretty sure we can't live migrate a virtual machine to the new style of networking because 
uh, QAMU, when you do live migration, it expects the bridges and um, the, the networking uh, parameters to be exactly the same. And they aren't, because we use Open vSwitch. It has a little bit of different uh, uh, config, so QAMU won't you allow it. But we can do one virtual machine at a time, because the old network and the new network can talk to each other. Uh, you just have to re-instantiate all uh, the virtual machine. That's why we're so keen on keeping the old uh, templates and images around so we can actually uh, re-instantiate uh, on the new node uh, with, uh, with all the settings. Um, yeah, and then it should just work. So yeah, that's what we're gonna do in our, uh, well, first we're gonna make it more, a little bit more production. Our test hypervisor network will be uh, converged and then we will start with ourselves. That's how we work. First, uh, eat your own dog food and then uh, we'll upgrade our customer clouds uh, if, it's, if it's all successful. But well, results are really cool. Yeah. So more questions? Uh, yeah, sure. I'm guessing on the switches you're running service work? No, it doesn't. Right, so I'll just show. Yep. So I guess on switches you're running a proprietary operating system, like a Vistas operating system? Yes. Uh, you can use, uh, well, it doesn't really matter what implementation you use. There are different vendors that use, uh, or that, that are able to do a BGP uh, VXLAN. Like uh, what would all the big names, uh, Cisco, Uniper, uh, oh, just name them, they yeah, can all do that. Probably you can also use open source um, images on top of um, bare metal switches. But, well, no time to play that. yeah, no, no time to play with that. <laughs> Nobody to buy all that expensive stuff. So, no, but sure you can. Um, but well, they happen to, to choose uh, Aristos. I'm really, really happy uh, with them, but yeah, it's proprietary. But it's all open. Uh, it's it's a uh, open standard, so you can do you can write it yourself, and you can use FOR, which we will do on the on the host. Um, yeah. So no more questions. Just some credits. So what I've shown you, um, it's not my work. Uh, Jeroen Lauwers, my colleague at Bit from networking, he's a really cool networking guy, but he also knows uh, really a lot about uh, uh, Linux networking. So he did basically all the work. Um, well, Sebastian Mango Kramer, he was the one that actually, well, had the same idea as we had and um, submitted a, a feature request and convinced the OpenEmbla guys and Ruben um, that it's actually a good idea to integrate it into OpenEmbla. Um, so, well, thanks to him. And uh, Vincent Bernard is a French guy who knows a lot about networking. Um, you really should look him up if you're into networking or have any kind of, uh, well, interest in that because this guy has really a numerous examples of how to build networks uh, with different vendors, different implementations, uh, and how it all can work together, including the setup we just described. So yeah, we would really uh, recommend uh, yeah, looking this guy up. And uh, yeah, that. Oh, thanks for, thanks for your patience. Uh,